Hello and welcome to St. John's Sunday School, Catechesis Lesson 10. Let's open with the Lord's Prayer. I would like you to say it along with me. Let's bow our heads. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So this week we're going to finish up the last commandment. And then next week we're going to do an overview of the commandments. And the week after that we'll have just a single lesson and then we're going to start into our uh, enduring faith curriculum again for the fall school year so the ten commandment <clears throat> you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor what does this mean it means that we should fear and love god so that we do not entice or force away our neighbor's wife, workers, or animals, or turn them against him, but urge them to stay and do their duty. Our two stories for this week, one comes out of 2 Samuel 11. Once King David looked out from his palace and he saw a married woman named Bathsheba. David wanted her for his wife. He set into motion a plan to have Bathsheba's husband killed so that he could marry her. But the Lord knew what David had done. He sent the prophet Nathan to tell David about a sinful man who had done a terrible thing. You are the man, Nathan told David. David then realized the terrible things he had done. David repented and God forgave him. Our second story comes from Genesis 16. Sarah, Abraham's wife, had a servant named Hagar. Hagar regarded Sarah disrespectfully, and Sarah treated Hagar poorly in return. Finally, Hagar ran away. But the angel of the Lord came to Hagar as she rested by a desert spring. The angel said, Go back to Sarah and submit to her, said the angel, and God will bless you. Hagar did as the angel had said. So let's go on and ask a few questions. What coveting does God forbid in the 10th commandment? God forbids every sinful desire to take from our neighbor that person's spouse or workers. Luke 12 goes on to say, He said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. If we look to Colossians 3, 5, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. David covets Uriah's wife and took her. That's our story from 2 Samuel 11. Absalom estranged the hearts of people of David in 2 Samuel 15. I think we talked about that a couple weeks ago, too, in the commandments. Uh, what does God require of us in the 10th commandment? We should be content with the helpers God has given us and encourage our neighbor's helpers to be faithful to our neighbor. Philippians 2, 4 goes to say, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Paul returned a runaway slave to his master in Philemon. And that would have been Onesimus, if you remember that story. Very short book. What does God particularly impress upon us in the last two commandments? You know, they're both very similar. In God's sight, evil desire coveting is indeed sin and deserves condemnation. If we look to Genesis 3, 6, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, 
she took some and ate it. James 1, 14 and 15 says, Each one is tempted, when by his own evil desires he is dragged away and enticed. Then, after desires have conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. God wants us to love Him and to have holy desires. Psalms 37 tells us that delight in yourself, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And Psalms 119, direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart towards your statutes and not towards selfish gain. And if we look to Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And that will wrap up our commandment. Like I say, next week we'll kind of do an overview of all the commandments and wrap this all up. And then the week after that, we will have just a one-off uh, kind of topical uh, Sunday school. And then we'll start into our regular curriculum. So let us close with a word of prayer. And if anybody ever wants good prayer and things like that, definitely look to your Lutheran service book or your hymnal. And there's a lot of good things in there besides just the divine service. There's a lot of things for families, and there's daily prayers, evening prayers, morning prayers, all kinds of things you guys can look to and use. So, let's fold our hands. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And thanks for tuning in this week, and God's blessings on your week.